is an HB fellow, an ACM distinguished member, and ACM life member. So uh, with that, uh, yeah, Chao take it away. Okay, uh, hi, good morning. Uh, I wanna thank Kevin and uh, uh, John Yu for inviting me to give a talk. So uh, today I'm gonna talk about uh, a recent work uh, done by my group on IoT security, and uh, it's called uh, HA Watcher. So it's for anomaly detection for smart homes. Okay, so I will give a brief introduction of IoT and then I'll focus on the work uh, which is uh, HA Watcher. And then after that, I'll present uh, our performance evaluation followed by conclusions. Okay, so I see most people are familiar with IoT, so I'll go quickly. Uh, IoT have been widely used and the market is uh, continuously expand. And uh, this page lists some of the numbers, like uh, even in 2020, there's already like uh, over 300 billion US dollars uh, market. And it's forecasted to be over a trillion dollar in 2030, okay. So among the Internet of Things, uh, it includes uh, like uh, medical things, uh, in the military or battlefield things, uh, uh, and also widely used in the smart home, smart office, intelligent building. Okay. So the figure here shows some of the uh, commonly used uh, IoT devices, like a uh, Philip Hue smart light, uh, Google Home smart speaker, or Alexa smart speaker, uh, Nest uh, thermostat, as well as smart TV, smart locks, and so on. Okay, so uh, uh, in this particular work, uh, uh, we look at uh, the um, smart home uh, environment, okay? Uh, and uh, the appified home means a smart home with apps, okay? So basically uh, people use uh, uh, IoT, smart IoT devices. Uh, the main reason is to achieve home automation. Um, so in general, for a smart home or a smart environment, uh, like a smart hospital, smart office, uh, there are IoT devices uh, deployed, again, like the smart light, uh, smart lock, and so on. And this IoT device, basically, each device roughly consists of two parts. One is the physical part that does the, you know, function, like, uh, uh, you know, light bulb or uh, measure the temperature and so on. Uh, the other part is for wireless communication. Okay, so it's called the cyber part. And various wireless technology are used for IoT devices, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, but also ZigBee, Z-Wave. So typically those IoT devices communicate uh, using wireless to either a hub or directed to the wireless router at home. And then from there to the internet, okay. Um, most of the IoT vendors provide a cloud platform-based server. Some of them uh, use a local server, but anyway, there's a server. Again, most of them use the cloud to um, run those home automation, okay? So typically the home automation is run uh, in server and typically it's in the cloud, okay? And for most smart home automations, uh, they are in, the so-called trigger condition action uh, paradigm, okay? It's very simple. So basically uh, you have a trigger, which will, uh, you know, let the program check the condition. And if the condition uh, is met, then it uh, execute the action, okay, sorry. So a simple example, a simple example here is the user, basically user can either choose the existing app or set up the automation uh, rules using the GUI interface. Um, again, a simple example user could set up is uh, when I am home and if it's like a 6 p.m. or after 6 p.m. then turn on the light automatically. Mm -hmm. Or if the temperature is lower than say um, 70 degree, turn on the heater and so on. Of course, you can set up more complicated uh, automations. <laughs> but uh, all of the, uh, today's uh, smart home automation uses a trigger condition action uh, paradigm. Okay. So um, that's the uh, smart home uh, IoT brief introduction. Mm -hmm. In this particular work, uh, we were interested in detecting anomalies in a smart home. The anomalies could be caused by various reasons, could be caused by cyber attacks. For example, an attacker either hacked into an IoT device in your home 
all compromise user credential. For example, some user use weak password or use the default password for a particular IoT device. Or it could be an, a malicious attack hijack the, the connection between the device and the cloud. Okay. Um, uh, anomalies could also happen because the IoT device uh, have problems, have malfunctions. Okay, and that happens all the time. And in our experiment, we found that uh, uh, some of the IoT devices are not that reliable, and uh, we actually found that there's all kinds of problems with the IoT device itself. Uh, so it could be that either the IoT device physical part failure. A simple example is you have a smart light bulb. The bulb inside, you know, that could be the, the metal part broken. Okay, then you know it's not gonna be turned on. Or it could be the cyber part problem. It could be either the cyber part, you know, the hardware has some problem, the software have some problem, or sometimes there's the virus communication problem. Okay. So anyway, so IoT device could have uh, a malfunctions. Okay. Uh, another source of anomaly is uh, human error or human mistake, and then that happens uh, you know, once in a while. Uh, for example, if the user is in the morning in a rush to go to work and they forgot to lock the door, or he cooked some breakfast to turn on the smart oven, but forgot to turn it off. Okay, so those kinds of things could happen. <laughs> um, so again, in this work, we want to detect anomalies. Uh, it could be caused by any of these reasons. Okay? So anomaly detection is a well-studied uh, domain, and uh, uh, typically people use data mining, machine learning, AI techniques to do that. And uh, at the beginning, we also uh, used uh, the traditional data mining, machine learning, AI technique to do that. And we found there are a lot of false alarms, uh, unfortunately, with the smart home uh, environment. Okay, um, so. Uh, instead, so we, what we did is we um, used a different approach. Uh, first, we tried the AI machine learning data mining approach. It did not work well. So what we continued is, again, the goal is we want to detect anomaly in smart environment in general. And uh, the threat model or the possible cause could be including malfunctioning of device or malicious attack, okay? And uh, for this particular work, we have some assumptions. Um, so uh, for example, we assume IoT servers are not compromised. Uh, of course, it could be compromised, but this is not a concern of this particular work. Also, we in this particular work, we do not consider the smart app for IoTs that may have malware. There have been a lot of work on this, so that can be detected by the existing approaches. Uh, <laughs> So again, this is, here's a summary of the threat model. Again, it could be malfunctioning. For example, there could be event, uh, faulty event. <laughs> Actually, we observed that in our uh, experiment as well. Like some motion sensor, when there's no motion at all, it uh, send motion on. We, we initially found it uh, very confusing, and then we added the camera to cover, cover the area. And we observed uh, that we basically obtained the ground truth in the the second day we found that there's no motion during that period, but the, the motions are still report motion. Uh, some possible reason was uh, uh, like, uh, there was like a major road nearby that the student's apartment uh, and one big truck could drive through, you know, it caused vibration or whatever. Okay, but again, those 40 events did happen and could happen. And also there could be command that come out of nowhere that happened as well. Um, one example was the platform sent the, the same command twice, and the two commands that are separated, uh, one not got delayed. It's probably because the platform saw that the first uh, message got lost, and like uh, after some timeout or whatever, and they resend another one. So that that's that happened as well. Right? Uh, also, it could be even got lost. Uh, you know that uh, that happens all the time, and uh, all command not executed either because the cyber part uh, failure or physical part failure, or could be attacks, okay? So the a malicious attacker could uh, create a fake event, a fake command, or intercept a command event, okay? And so on, okay? So I think I already mentioned this one. So, uh, sorry about the, the animation. So um, basically we tried the, the data mining AI machine learning approach. We found it did not work well. And uh, 
the possible reasons are because they're black box model and uh, usually they're not explainable. I understand there's an explainable AI, um, but it, you know, also they're, they're not easy to update. Uh, mm -hmm. And that, that, that could be the reasons that cause the uh, high false alarm, okay. Um, and we look at the, into these uh, issues and uh, what we uh, uh, thought was those uh, approach did not uh, fully utilize the rich semantic information in the IoT smart home environment, okay? So uh, that's why, you know, the, the result was not good, okay? So for this particular research issue, uh, we want to again detect anomalies in smart environment. And our main idea is to try to utilize the rich semantic information in smart environment. Uh, and uh, during the research, we formalized the three research problems. The first research question is what kind of semantic information can be used for this purpose? <laughs> And the second one was uh, how to obtain those information and how to represent it. And the third one then is how to use the semantic information for anomaly detection. Okay. Um, so uh, for the first question, we found that there are at least three kinds of semantic information. Uh, due to the time reason, I'm gonna have to go quickly. One is from smart apps, okay. So when we did the research with the Samsung platform, they provided smart apps source code, okay? So we we write our own software, we analyze the smart apps source code, and we obtained the automation rules from smart apps, okay? So um, of course, if there's no source code, you could do reverse engineering, okay? The other uh, channel you can get semantic information is a physical channel, okay? So basically, in a smart home, you know, they, all the IoT devices and the human, they share the same physical environment space, okay? So when one thing happened, one device, uh, you know, did something that could uh, affect the physical channel and uh, affect uh, the, uh, you know, uh, sensing uh, the environment of another IoT device. A simple example is if you turn mm -hmm. on smart light in one room, then the illuminance reading in that room will increase. Or if you turn on heater, the temperature will increase, okay? So there's the physical channel, and then the other channel is the user activity. Uh, so when user is at home, it interact with the motion sensor and also it causes a lot of automation rule to run. Uh, so that's another channel, okay? So basically those are the three channels. Um, and uh, so I already briefly mentioned how to obtain the semantic uh, information for smart apps. Again, we have the source code. We go to rewrite the software to do the code analysis, obtain the, uh, you know, obtain the uh, rules. So th this is the real uh, smart app code. Uh, it's pretty structured, so it's not hard to obtain the trigger condition action of uh, an automation rule. Okay. And for the physical environment, you have a uh, for smart home, you have like a, a bunch of IoT devices installed. What we did is we, for a particular home, it actually the, the platform provide interface for you to automatically obtain what device is installed in this home. And after you obtain, say there's 20 device, IoT device in this particular home, and uh, you can also obtain the uh, type and the model of the device. Then what we did is we, uh, wrote a program to crawl the internet, uh, use the device type uh, and model as input to crawl the internet, obtain the description of each device installed in this home. And then we use natural language processing technique uh, to compare the description of the devices installed in this home. Uh, what we want to do is uh, we obtain the possible correlation among the devices automatically. Okay, so if like two description, description of two devices, they are very similar and we use the natural language processing word to vector, this are the, like a Google's uh, has the you know open source code to give you a score of the similarity. If the similarity is higher than a certain threshold, we consider they're potentially correlated. Okay, so, so in this research, we obtained a 73 by 73 matrix and we marked the, the two properties that could correlate based on the natural language processing, but they're potentially correlated. They may or may not be actually correlated. 
which we will test later. Okay. So um, if two are potentially correlated, there's uh, all kinds of possibility. Uh, there's actually two times eight, 16 of potential uh, you know, correlations. Uh, and then there's a the human uh, activity. We basically use the motion sensor and the presence sensor to uh, uh, detect if the user is at home or not, okay? Uh, so after we get all this information, uh, we need to use a uniform representation. Otherwise, you know, you cannot uh, like uh, easily implement in the system. We actually implement the whole system, okay? Uh, using real IoT devices, real apps, and connecting to the real IoT platform like Samsung. So, uh, smart thing platform. Okay, so uh, we represented the, as the correlation um, here. Okay, this is what our representation uh, of the uh, uh, you know channels. We use the same uh, correlation representation, and uh, again because uh, there are a lot of hypothetical correlation, we need to test them and refine them, uh, and then get a final set of correlation. Okay. So um, let me, okay, hypothetical testing. What we did is we need to get some data from the real home. Okay, basically the data are the logs of the IoT events and the IoT command in this particular smart home. Uh, okay, so we collect all the data, basically all the event log, command log. What we did is if we have a hypothetical correlation, say if the particular smart switch turn on, then the power meter, because smart switch connected, for example, with some appliance. If you turn on, the, the appliance will be turned on, and then the power meter will be high. Those are hypothetical correlation. And then we basically check the log, like a week or two weeks, see if these two events happened uh, you know, at the same time, very close to each other for a high percentage. So we, in our particular research, we choose 95%. Of course, you can change the parameter, okay? So anyway, if it happens more than 95% of the time, we think mm -hmm. this correlation is true. Mm -hmm. And if not, we do not include this hypothetical correlation. So this is what we did. Um, I think I have like two or three minutes left, so I'm gonna go quickly. So um, yeah. So after we get the correlation and the finalize the test data, we have high final set of correlation. Those are hard work. After hard work is done, the third step is easy, okay? Once you have a final set of correlation, it can be easily used to detect an anomaly, okay? So basically, uh, uh, our system deployed and they observed the smart home in real time uh, and update the states uh, in uh, like a virtual uh, shadow engine, okay? Uh, when their events happens and uh, based on correlation, we expect a, a correlating correlating to happen as well. If it did not happen, uh, violate the correlation, we uh, you know collect it and then we raise our alarm. Right? So like here's an example. Usually, you know, this is a correlation obtained either from the automation rule or from the you know uh, physics channel. Uh, so when their water detected. Uh, uh, there's automation that uh, will automatically close the wall. And this is what happens uh, most of the time, okay? And it's, it's uh, this is probably like in the smart app, it's defined, user defined, okay? So if in the real world, we uh, detected a water leaking, but after like uh, within two seconds or a small amount of, small amount of time, the valve should be closed, but if it's not closed, then there's a mismatch. Then we raise alarm, tell the owner, okay, uh, you know, you have water detect detected, uh, but the valve is not closed, okay. And there are some other examples due to the time reason. I'm not going to explain the details. I'm going to just go into the, this is the system we designed, we implemented it, okay. Again, the semantic analysis part, we basically analyze the smart app apps code, obtain the automation rule. <laughs> And the correlation mining, basically, we analyze the physical channel, the device correlation, and the user activity channel. We get the hypothetical correlation. We use the real data to test it. And we get a final set of correlations, which is used in real time to detect any anomaly. Okay. So we did the, we implement the system and we tested in four real home uh, test bed. Uh, uh, one is the two story house, another is the one two bedroom and then two one bedroom, okay? And then there are six participants lives in those uh, four, uh, you know, test beds. 
And we installed the real IoT devices we bought from you know the market, uh, like Best Buy, Amazon. Okay, uh, and we installed smart apps uh, from the Samsung official smart app uh, store. Okay, so those are the numbers of room in each test bed and devices and smart app installed. Okay, um, I'll give you some numbers for the test bed number one, which is house. So that the from the smart apps we obtained forty six correlation rules. And then use the hypothetical correlation, we generated more than 2,000. That's too many, okay? Uh, and then we use the testing, we narrowed down to 146, and then we did some final refining, we get 130, okay? So, um, and we collected the three weeks of data, but we found that actually two weeks or one week of data is good enough for, uh, as well, okay? So uh, let's see. Uh, and then for the testing, we have to generate anomalies, okay? And then we uh, measured the uh, uh, accuracy of the our approach in detecting the anomaly. Okay, so those are the anomalies we generated. <laughs> they are there are like a twenty four different types of the anomaly. Okay, uh, twenty four different different kinds belonging to like uh, uh, six different types. Okay, uh, basically are the different of event or command uh, problem or failure or attacks. Okay. Again, unfortunately, due to the time reason, I don't have time to explain the details. So our overall precision is over 97% and the recall is uh, over 94%. So the performance was very good. Again, those are experiments conducted in the real test bed uh, using real device, real app, connecting to the real cloud, the sense and submersing cloud, okay. Uh, we also compared it with the traditional approach like uh, social room mining as uh, SVM and uh, also neural network we didn't put here, but they, they didn't do well, okay. So I'm gonna summarize the work uh, since my time's up. So basically in this particular work, we uh, uh, use the rich semantic information from smart homes uh, from multiple channels uh, to do anomaly detection. Basically the channels include the smart apps, physical channels and the user activities, okay. And we use a various approach to obtain the semantic information, including code analysis, web crawl, NLP, and uh, hypothesis correlation testing and refining. And we implement the system in real uh, world in the uh, test bed, okay, in test bed, okay, real test bed. And we got the pretty good result. The paper was published in the top security conference using security 2021. Uh, that's all, okay. <laughs>